Now let's take a look at the high-level optimizations we need to do for this program based on our profiling information. So here's the more detailed profiling information we get when we force OpenCL to finish after each command. And we can now see how we're actually spending time. So if we take a look at this data here, what should we do first to improve it? Well, update is now really fast, and this is what we expect. Update's about 35 times faster, so we probably don't want to spend any more time trying to optimize that right now. Spending a lot of time reading back data, and we're spending a lot of time compiling, and this is actually a huge amount of time here, but we're spending a huge amount of time writing data. And so the first thing we should tackle here is how can we reduce the amount of data we're going to write to the device? So what should we do to fix the data transfer? Remember, this is the code we've done. We've replaced update CL in our inner loop with code that goes through and does all of this stuff. So how can we fix the data transfer? Well, can we send less data? Do we need the data on every iteration? Do we need to write the data to the GPU, or can we keep it there? Could we change how to send the data? I'm not really sure how we do that. I mean, OpenCL only provides ability to send data to the GPU. Can we change when we send the data? Well, we need the data before we run the kernel. So we can't really send the data a different time because we always need it before we execute. But maybe we could send less data. Right now, we're transferring the data. We're writing the data every time we do update CL. Do we need to write it every time? So the trick here is we need to move the overhead out of the loop. Instead of doing all of this stuff in the loop every time, these red ones here, compiling the program, setting up the buffers, sending the data to the device, we only need to do these once. We only need to initialize once and get the data to the device. Once we've done that, we can do these things every time in the loop. We need to enqueue the kernel, do the calculation, read back the results, but we don't need to write the data every time. We can keep the data on the device and reuse it in every iteration. So let's take a look at our new main loop doing this. So this is our C program. We're going to go ahead and run update CL just like we did before, but now update CL is going to choose which buffer it is. We're not going to tell it always what the in and out buffers are every time we're going to swap the buffers. And so this allows us to keep the data on the GPU. We don't have to write it every time. Then we're going to read back our data because we still need to read back the data to run find range on the CPU. Okay? So what do update CL and read back data look like? Well, update CL is now just going to run the kernel. So it's going to configure the kernel with whichever the in and out buffers are. And these may change. In fact, they'll change on every iteration because we're doing a double buffer approach here. And then we enqueue the kernel. And so that's all update CL is going to do. And read back data is just going to read back the data. So what we've done is we've taken the writing of the data out of the inside loop here. We're no longer writing the data to the device every time. So what do we get out of this? Well, we get a pretty big speed up. Look where we are now. Update is really fast on the GPU. We've gotten rid of our write time. Update's also pretty fast on the, C on the CPU. So we're getting good parallelism on the CPU. And we've gotten rid of our time spent writing here. So we've succeeded here. By not sending the data to the GPU every time, we've eliminated our time writing. So this is pretty good. Well, is it? So good is subjective. It absolutely is. This is the whole point of getting an education so that you can go in and make subjective expert opinions. You should be able to look at this and say, is this good or not? And the answer is no. Our GPU is 35 times faster. And if you look at where we are here, we're just barely running four times faster. We've got a GPU that's 35 times faster, we've worked medium hard to use it, and our program's running four times faster. That's not a good result. We should be able to do a lot better than that. 